I've spent a lot of time in my life on the water. It's such a constant reminder that we're very small compared to the power of the natural world. You really feel how the ecosystem is changing. We're losing the foundational aspects of our biodiversity. We're losing the invertebrates. We're losing our soil biodiversity. And these are the bits of nature and biodiversity that are often almost invisible and they're not at the forefront of our mind. But without them, we have nothing else. We need to be looking at those small things. I'm Kat Bruce, the founder of Nature Metrics, and we're going to show you how we use eDNA to make biodiversity truly measurable at scale. I was born in the hills between England and Wales. I think that sense of the wild has stayed with me my whole life. I ended up doing a PhD on tropical ecology, working in the Amazon to collect data on the biodiversity and starting to use genetics for the first time. It was just a complete step change. I was so convinced that this had to come out of the research world. And I remember saying to people at the time, actually, I've got my own business idea that I'd like to do. It involves squishing up insects and sequencing their DNA. And everyone looked at me like I was completely mad. Before eDNA, you're relying on a person seeing or hearing and being able to identify each individual of each species. There aren't enough people that have the skills to be able to do that. There's DNA everywhere in the environment from the organisms that have passed through and left that material there and from the microbial communities that live in those environments that are too small for us to see with the naked eye. So environmental DNA is almost like a story or, or a narrative and we can take that material and learn about what's happened in that environment. So anyone can collect samples. Nature Metrics has designed our kits to be as accessible as possible. And so our clients will take either a water or a soil sample. And then that's the sample and that goes to the lab. So when a sample's returned to the lab, it undergoes four stages of processing. DNA extraction, where we remove the DNA that's bound to the filter. We then move on to amplification, where we make millions of copies of our target of interest, so that in the third stage, sequencing, we can visualize that DNA. And then on the fourth stage, our bioinformatics processing, we can put species names to those DNA sequences. We have a team of data scientists who turn all of that data into visualizations so that it's easy to understand to help take action. One of the projects we've been working on for the last few years is looking at natural rewilding of kelp forest on the south coast of the UK. EDNA will detect species that aren't necessarily here right now. We found three times as many species using environmental DNA than we did on the brubs. Had we only used brubs, we would have only found about 25-ish species um, and just missed a whole lot of species that are really important to protect as well. Today we have sampling kits going out all over the world. We've worked in over 110 countries. One of my favourite examples is the work that we did with Fauna and Flora in Liberia working on pygmy hippos. They had some anecdotal reports that there were pygmy hippos living in a couple of rivers where they weren't known. And we found pygmy hippo DNA in 50% of the samples and gave the evidence that was needed for Fauna and Flora to expand their conservation project into these areas and bring the funding with it. eDNA has come a long way in the last 10 years. And we've gone from mostly single species studies to big community landscape level assessment. So the more data that we analyze, the more trends and patterns that emerge from that data and the potential to generate insights from this is almost unlimited. How are we? What are we waiting Data isn't worth anything until it drives action. We're really gonna democratize access to the data that we're generating. Everything from the boardroom right the way down to small landowners and fundamentally build a world where Long-term economic growth doesn't come at the expense of nature. All of this totally changes the way that you look at the world because you're just living in a cloud of DNA. We're breathing it in, we're walking through it, we're contributing to it. We are here by the grace of nature and that's not something we should take for granted. 